Hey, what's going on everyone? Happy Monday! Monday in the house, my favorite day. <laughs> this is Monday Muscle Madness episode eight. And these are the top three things holding you or me back from seeing optimal results. And today's episode has a lot of psychology in it, so I brought no better than special guest speaker. She has her master's degree in school counseling. Uh, my lovely wife, Erica, so she's going to make sure that I have the psychology down on point for today's episode. So, first of all, what are the three things that are holding me back for seeing results or holding you back? One, me. Two, myself. Three, I. Like me, myself, and I, okay? Or in this case, you, you, and you. So, what do I mean by that? Let's dive in a little bit more specific. So. Number one, the number one thing that I see for, um, from people, including myself, this is really therapeutic because I'm really just talking about me here, is lack of ownership and true accountability to themselves. Not, not to their coach or their husband or their wife, but to themselves. So what do I mean by that? Is our human psyche is designed to do two things, avoid pain, and seek pleasure. You, you, if you just boil down the human organism, that's what we want to do. Is we, want to, we want to chase pleasure and avoid pain. So psychological pain is one of those things. So when things are not going our way on our exercise program, the first thing that we want to do is not admit to ourselves um, that we're not adhering or we're not following the plan because we don't want to disappoint ourselves. That would ca cause kind of a, a temporary psychological pain. However, if you confront that temporary pain, it's going to lead to long-term pleasure because then you're not going to be caught in this feedback loop. Okay. Once you get in the feedback uh, loop of avoiding accountability, avoid accountability, avoid pain, avoid pain, it's just going to send you right back to that avoidance. Okay. So an example of that would be. Say that you're, uh, you're on your nutrition plan and say that you're in a 300 calorie per day deficit, all right? And it's a weekend and you have a handful of almonds, because almonds are healthy, right? <laughs> so you just have, it's just a handful and a couple light beers, just a couple, all right? That in a 300 calorie per day deficit would set you back just over three days for results. Ooh. Yeah, so you've got to have, again, that brutal honesty, but if you're too busy caught in that feedback loop, okay, of avoidance, you're never going to confront that reality. Or if you do, you might sugar uh, coat it and just say, well, I only had a few almonds. There's no way. There's no way. But knowing your facts, okay? So we hear this a lot, tons, especially in the nutrition realm. And actually, we, we follow this, actually, is I'll hear a lot, well, I'm good 80% of the time. That's, that's Eric and I. We are good 80% of the time, okay? But... <laughs> when you boil it down to the facts, what we're really saying is that we are average in compliance. 80% is average. C. It's a C. Okay? So what does average mean as far as compliance means? It means that we're going to maintain. And we do. We maintain very, very well. <laughs> All right? But we're, we're honest with that. So when we want to get mad Monday morning and be like, dude, why am I not changing? We, again, we don't get in that feedback loop. We automatically know it falls on us. We're 80 percenters, okay? And that's why we're maintaining and doing a darn good job at maintaining. Yeah. But now we're empowered because we know that, hey, if we want to get uh, to see some changes and feel some changes, we need to get closer to that 90, 95 and up. Yes. All right? So be real. Know your data. Know your facts. Be honest with your facts. Uh, yesterday, I had 35 grams of protein. How am I going to go and, and complain? Dude, I'm not putting on any muscle. When the reality of it is I had 35 grams of protein yesterday. Now there's a lot of excuses. We're not going to get into the excuses. We're just going to confront the fact and move on. Psychologically, you'll find that it's so much more empowering. Eric, any on number one? Well, I mean, your excuses are always going to be there. You know, there's always a reason to, um, to go off your plan. There's always a reason to skip that workout. Skip it. I mean, there's, there's always going to be reasons. <laughs> and so being able to just what Jesse said, you know, don't allow those excuses to come into play. And if you do go off plan for whatever reason, don't make an excuse for it. Just say, you know what, I own it, I did it, 
and move on and get to the next step. Um, and you know, when we say we're 80-20, we'll hear a lot of people say that to us. And in reality, if you're not tracking 100%, you don't know if you're 80-20. You might be closer to 60-40, but the mind is a powerful thing and it, it'll tell it, you know, it'll, it'll believe whatever you tell it. So if you are sitting there saying, well, I'm, I'm 80% and, and you'll believe it, you will buy into that. But if you're tracking every single thing that you're consuming, whether you're on plan or off plan, you're going to have a much better reality of why you're not progressing or why you are progressing. So, you know, own the fact that you went off plan, but still, still know what you're doing. Still know what's putting in, you're putting in your mouth. A lot of people will have that handful of almonds and they'll forget about it. Oh yeah. It's yeah. so easy to forget. Right. You no, know, I only had two beers when in reality you had like six, but they were spaced out and you forgot about it. That's human error. But if you can track those things, it's gonna eliminate some of that. Yep. So total ownership, honesty empowers, even if that honesty creates a little bit of temporary pain. That temporary pain is going to give you long-term pleasure if you confront it and you won't get caught up in that feedback. All right, number two is avoiding deflection and distraction. And this is very closely related to number one. So let's go back to that feedback loop, okay? So Monday morning comes around, you're like, oh man, things aren't working. And you read an article and it talks about like high cortisol contributing to belly flat. And you're like, that's it, that's it, it's my cortisol. It's because I, I, I have kids and job and a stressful life. Or uh, you read a, an article on metabolic adaptation and, and you just read metabolic adaptation and that's all you see and then you're like, that's it, that's 100%. All of those kind of coin things are distracting. If you're watching this video right now, you don't have probably those 3%. You probably don't have like the gluten allergy or if you do, it's not responsible for, the, for your inability to lose body fat and so forth. You probably don't have adrenal fatigue or if you do have mild adrenal fatigue, it's probably not the cause of your ability to not see results. So all of the, the 3% distractions over here make you avoid the 97% of what's is, what it actually is. Okay, so number two, deflection and distraction, that's again part of that feedback loop that we, we talked to in bullet point one. You want to avoid that. Okay, I was diagnosed three years ago with low testosterone, so it would be super easy for me to get in that feedback loop and be like, well, of course I can't gain any muscle. You know, I, I, I have low T. Well, not when you're eating 35 grams of protein on a Sunday, watching Netflix all day, <laughs> skipping your workout. You, you, you see what I mean? That, that feedback loop is super, super easy to get into. So number two, avoid the deflection and the distraction of all the people kind of trying to to sell you on these different ideas when they, and then they take your mind off the, the, the ball. Okay, squats and deadlifts I call that. Focus on the squats and deadlifts. <laughs> Back to the basics. Yes. Yeah. Anything on that one, Erica? Um, no, I think if you can, again, go back to eliminating number one that we talked about and owning it, then that 97% is going to be much more of a reality. Um, and, and then, you know, maybe if, God forbid, there is the 3% that we talked about that is an issue, well then you're gonna really able, be able to break that down, decipher that, and really establish that that's what's going on. But again, when you're <coughs> not, not noticing the 97%, there's no way to really know what's happening. Sure. All right, number three, we see this a lot. Compete, don't compare. That is huge for your ability to remain positive and see the results that you want to see. When you compete, you dictate what success is. When you compare, external factors dictate what success is. So think about that. If you're very comparative, I hear this a lot, like, oh man, uh, I wanna win the overall or I wanna win first place like this guy did or this gal did. Well, man, that person's been training 15 plus years. You know, you're at it 15 months. That's not a fair comparison. You know, so take ownership of your goals and don't compare them to other. That is a psychological wormhole that you don't want to go down because it takes the power off of you and puts it into somebody else's hands. 100%, you know, um, <clears throat> the only person that you can compare anything to is yourself. You are a unique person and to compare yourself to someone that is every statistic that you have, they don't exist. 
um, except for maybe like a twin or a triplet. Right. But you can't compare that. You know, Jesse and I, if we kill it on a Sunday and, you know, eat all this pizza or whatever we might do, and maybe he still has abs the next day. And I'm thinking, well, what the heck? Well, he's been doing this since he was 16 years old. I've been doing it a couple years. So you, you just cannot compare yourself. That comparison gap is torture, mm -hmm. and you will be so much healthier and so much stronger and powerful if you just get rid of that. Yeah, absolutely. Great, so wrapping it up, number one, complete ownership and knowing your facts, tracking those facts, good, bad, or ugly at all times, that's gonna be great. Number two is focusing on the 97% that's kind of right there in your face. I know it's, it's simple, it's foundational, but that's gonna get you to seeing long-term results, not focusing on the 3% distractions that a lot of times you have no control over anywhere. And then number three is compete, be in it to win it, but don't compare. All right, hope this helps, hope it permeates. We will see everyone next week.